I'm Cajun Ken. I'm bringing the bayou to the Big Apple. Today we're going deep south, so bait your hook, it's time to eat. Today we're having a Mississippi catfish fry, Cajun puppies, and my mom's good old southern coleslaw. But you know what? I grew up on a catfish farm with my grandpa. Early in the afternoon, I would go down to the pond with my grandpa and he would, I would help him feed the fish. He would throw the fish food in the water, all the fish would come up to the water and just churn it and churn it. So when me and my brother would go fishing, we would stop by the barn and get some of that fish food and we'd help us fish. Now, you know what? It's kind of like cheating, but you know what? Boy, it helps us catch some fish. So one day, we're on the pier. We throw that fish food in the water. We throw our hooks in the water. And then all of a sudden, my brother falls in the water with all of those fish. He's screaming, help me, help me. So I grab the dip net and I throw it in and say, get that big fish right over there. Man, he climbs out of that water. Ooh-wee, he's a mess. He said I pushed him. I didn't do no such. But needless to say, that was the last time I went fishing with my brother. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. For my mama's southern coleslaw recipe, we have buttermilk, fresh ground pepper, kosher salt, lemon juice, ground onion, whole milk, mayonnaise, dill pickle, sugar, carrot, purple, and white cabbage. For our Mississippi catfish fry and our Cajun puppies, we have seasoned catfish fry, corn muffin mix, a little bit of chopped onion, chopped jalapeno pepper, fresh egg, cornmeal, flour, whole milk, and farm-raised catfish. Okay, we showed you how to make the southern coleslaw using my grandma's old-timey grinder. Now, okay, I know you're in the city, so let's go ahead and show you how I do it right here in the city using just a good old trusty knife. Let's go ahead and trim this cabbage off. You always want to cut off the ends here and clean this baby up just like this here. You always want to shred off Ooh, that grease is hot over there. Sounds like we're about to have a fish fry. I'm going to take this cabbage here. I'm going to cut right down the middle. Just like that there. Lay one on the side here. Just like this here. Take your knife. Now I'm going to cut diagonally straight down. I'm going to cut strips into this. And then I'm going to do this with the purple cabbage. Just like this here. And I'm going to do this to both cabbages. So, and then once, once you cut it all like this right here, as you can see, I'm going to get all my strips, and then I'm just going to start cutting right down the middle here. Make a big old mess here. It's going to take me a bowl. Get rid of these end leaves over here. It's all this up in my bowl, just like this here. You can make large strips, small strips. I like to make them just however how they come out. Good deal. I got my cabbage, got my white cabbage cut there. Now I'm going to take my purple cabbage. I love me some purple cabbage. Purple cabbage has a little bit of a different flavor here. I'm not for sure uh, if everybody can tell the difference, but I know I can. So I got my purple cabbage here. I'm going to cut it up just like this here. I'm going to put this in my bowl. Anytime someone gets you coleslaw out of a can or a container in the grocery store that's been sitting on the shelf for a few months, don't buy it. It's no good. It don't taste right. Everything is all congealed together. It's easier and probably just as cheap to make it yourself fresh. You know what? All your friends will love you for it. They'll be like, oh my God, what you learn how to make coleslaw like that? Watch this guy on Cajun in the City. He gave me his recipe. 
So I'm going to mix this up right here. As you can see, I got my purple mixed up in there like that. Next, I'm going to add some shredded carrots right into the top. This is where you get your carrots all shredded up in there. You can use a, another type of grinder. You could actually shred this with a knife if you wanted to. I just like to use this good old shredder right here. It does a very good job. And that's all you do with that there. I cut up some earlier, just a little bit more, and mix this carrot up here. You don't have to add carrot, but you know what? Southern coleslaw does have at least one carrot in it. And that's what the recipe calls for. Just one carrot. Adds a little sweet little flavor to it. Get that chunk out of there. It makes it all good. So now, I got my purple cabbage, my white cabbage, my carrots in here. Let's go ahead. We're going to add our mayonnaise right to it. This right here is about one cup of mayonnaise. I mix that up in here. I usually add just a little bit more mayonnaise, but you know what? Follow the recipe. I like mine a little thicker than most people. Mix that up in there like that. Just mixing the mayonnaise in it is what I'm doing. Next, I'm going to add my whole milk to it. Whole milk goes in there just like that. Now I'm going to stir this bad boy up. Man, it's looking like southern coleslaw. What do you think there? And I'm making a mess too. But so what? That's what happens when you make southern coleslaw. Next up, I'm going to add some of my onion. A little bit of fresh onion in here. Woo-wee! Onion makes things, everything better. Tastes good. Smells good. Onion's in there. Add a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Pepper, we like to say down south, you know. We're going to add a little bit of sugar. I don't like my coleslaw it's super sweet, but it does call for sugar. So taste test as you go. See how you like it. Like I said, stay away from the store-bought. That ain't real coleslaw. I don't know what that is, but I tell you what, it's not anything I would put on my table. So if it's not good enough for my table... It's not good enough for yours, right? Next up, fresh lemon juice. Right in there like that. A little bit of fresh kosher salt in there like that. Now, I haven't tasted it yet. Look at that. Now, that's southern. That's Cajun. That's good. Ooh. Now let's give it a good old taste test. Look at the mess I made. But so what? It's good. You know what? If you don't make a big mess, it's probably not worth eating. Mm. It's good. We're there. Our coleslaw is made up. We're looking good. We're tasting good. Next up is our Mississippi catfish fry. Before we get started, I'm going to cut these fillets up, but also I want to show you, when you get these fish from the market, always make sure you get a nice, fat fillet. Now, these ain't southern fillets, I guarantee it, but you know what? They're good, and some of the best fillets that you can actually get is fresh right from the fish market in your local neighborhood. I picked these up right in the city, so always remember, good, fresh fillets. If you don't know how to skin a fish... Skin a cat, that is, because this is catfish. Ask the fish guy there to skin it and flay it all out there for you. Bring these babies home. Nothing is more simple than this southern delicacy than Mississippi catfish fry. So, all you do, get you some seasoned catfish fry. All it is is meal, flour, a little bit of love in there. Put your catfish in it, bread it up really good, put it in the hot oil. But one thing that we do down south that you've probably never heard of, is that we always take a paper sack, pour in that catfish fry, 
put the catfish in there, roll it all around, man, it makes a big difference because it coats it a whole lot better than rolling it in flour with your hands and everything. And guess what I happen to have? A sack, just like my folks used to have back home. I remember my grandpa and grandma would save these sacks just to do this southern task when it comes to catfish. But they would have 20 to 30 of these lined out all through the kitchen, and they would have catfish in every one. And us kids would have to come by, pick up these sacks, and shake us all this around. That was our job. We couldn't cook around the hot stuff, but we definitely could shake us up some catfish. So let's go ahead and pour in our catfish fry. Just a simple sack here. Pull this in here like this. This is seasoned catfish fry. Wow. Look at that. Put the filet in there like that. Just drop it in there. <coughs> Good stuff. Woo! This reminds me of home already. Now we're going to close this up. Just like this here. Now this was our job as kids. And you want to tenderly roll it around. Maybe you've never seen it done like this. But guess what? You're coating that fish 100%. It's coating it really good. Now keep in mind, the fish were a little wet too. So that helps the uh, catfish fry to stick to the fish. Don't put oil on your fish. Just put water on it. A little bit of love. You don't have to put any seasoning on it. If you get the seasoned catfish fry, it's already seasoned there for you. Now we're going to, of course, jack it up a little bit as we cook, but don't overdo it, especially with salt. So, sounds like it's good. Let's go ahead and open this up. See what we got here. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> Beautiful. Now this reminds me of home. Ooh, this is southern. This is Cajun. This is good. Let's lay these out like this here. See how easy that was? And all I used was a simple paper sack that I got at one of my local grocery stores. Mmm, drop that down there. Now I got my oil over here heated up. I'm cooking these catfish in a skillet, but you can actually cook them in a pot at home. I love cooking in a cast iron skillet. It just, to me it changes the flavor. I love it. And uh, it's something that I grew up on. Everyone needs a cast iron skillet at home. So, next up, catfish. We're going to lay it down in here just like that. Oh, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of my grandpa used to do it. He would lay these catfish in there like that, cook them up. Now, it doesn't take long. Just like that there. Oh. Reminds me of home already. Man, if you could smell the kitchen in here right now, you'd want to climb through the TV, pull a plate up to the table, and eat. I guarantee it. Woo! Oh, we want to cook these up to a golden brown. We don't want to overcook them. I like my catfish cooked very, uh, very moist. I don't like it all super dried out. And catfish should never be hard and brittle on the outside and chewy on the inside. It needs to be beautiful on the outside through and through. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about right here in the big city. We're cooking like we're down south and you can too. So first up I like to tell you a little story. Growing up down south, my grandma and grandpa always made hush puppies. And you never had catfish without hush puppies. So there's no way I can make catfish without honoring my grandparents and doing the same recipe that I grew up on that I'm sharing with you today here in the big city. And anywhere else you have to be viewing the show. This is southern. This is Cajun. This is good. So you know what? Let's get started. First up on deck... Real simple ingredients. Our cornmeal mix. This is a cornmeal blend, unseasoned. We're going to dump this right in here. Man, I can hear that oil over there just popping away. We got a cornmeal mix in here. Since I'm just cooking enough for myself. Next up in our hush puppy mix, we're going to add one 
well beaten egg. Just like this here. There's no right way or wrong way to beat an egg. Well beaten. I guess you could put it all in there. Not beaten, but that's what my grandma and my mom always says. You wanna, Kenneth, you wanna beat that egg. I'm like, what's that egg ever do to you? Dump it in there like that. I also grew up with chickens on the farm. Yeah, I remember those days with chickens on the farm. One time I got chased out of the barn from a mean, mean chicken. I guess because I was messing around with her nest. But a well-beaten egg, that's all we need. So I don't think no chickens are going to run us off here today. All right, that's looking good in there. Next up, we're going to add our whole milk. Don't use all of the milk that the recipe calls for just at first because I don't know how much meal you put in here. So you want to make sure that your batter is not too liquefied. Just like that there. You don't want to make it too soupy. Because then, as the nuns would say, those croquettes de maize wouldn't do just right. We're going to add a little bit of flour. Not too much. We're going to sprinkle this in here. You can use a flour sifter if you want to. I just like to sprinkle it right in. Just like that. We're going to mix this up here a little bit more. This is a thickening agent. Is all flour is. See how thick it gets there? Don't worry about getting messy. All right, that's looking good there. All right, next up we're going to add our little bit of Cajun peppers. We got our jalapeno peppers here, and this is where we Cajunize it. These are Cajun puppies. Some people down south called hush puppies, but you know, these are Cajun puppies. So basically, it's hush puppies, a little bit of kick to them. This is how I like it. These are chopped up jalapeno peppers. You can use habanero peppers. Woo, now that'd be hot. I wouldn't recommend that to the kids. I'm going to add just a little more cornmeal, plain white cornmeal. I'm adding to it. And what the cornmeal does, it just makes it a little bit thicker. See, I'm working this here. I'm showing it love. I'm showing it passion. I'm putting some time into it. You know, I just got to tell you, one thing about cooking down south is that you can't cook a proper southern meal with three main ingredients. You know what those ingredients are if you watched the show before, but I'm going to tell all of you that haven't seen the show before and those three main ingredients are passion, love, and time. That's it. That's all you need is to cook a wonderful southern meal as those three main ingredients. I guarantee it. If you're not willing to put those three main ingredients into what you're doing and you want to call yourself a southern cook, see this? Throw it away. Stop cooking. Go order your food from someone's restaurant and be upset about it because you know what? You'll never be a good cook if you don't add those three main ingredients. Because that right there is how I started cooking at the age of seven because it took me some time to make myself over to that grill. And I was passionate about it because I was hungry. There you go. So that's a true story. So also down south, that's just what we do. We love to cook. And I love to cook right here in the kitchen, here in the big city, bringing all these southern recipes right down here. I mean, up here. I kind of forget where I'm at sometimes. Up here to you guys, and hopefully you'll get these recipes from me. You'll go home. You'll try them yourself. Let me know how good they are. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Everybody comes to me, they email sometimes and say, you know, I tried a certain recipe and it didn't come out right and I did something wrong. I said, good for you. Good. At least you tried it, right? Try it again. What did you do? What did you do wrong? You know? And they say, well, I added this instead of that. And I said, well, it's okay to experiment. Be yourself. Add things to it. Make the recipe your own. Use my recipes as a guideline. I'm adding a little bit of onion in here. Cajun puppies won't be great without a little bit of onion. So basically, it's about two cups in here. I'm going to add about three handfuls. And I'm going to mix this up and see how the consistency works out. Because I want this to be just right. I want this to remind me of home. Because it does. 
because that catfish is fried up deliciously. These hush puppies are coming around. I'm going to put a little bit of scallions in here, chopped scallions that is. This not only gives it a beautiful color, gives it a great flavor too. Mm. A lot of mixing going on here. Our batter's looking good. Let's go ahead and get these bad boys in this hot oil here. Always be sure you have a little bowl of water with two spoons. All you need is two teaspoons. And what you do, so your teaspoon in the water, go right into your batter like this right here. You want to use the other teaspoon to rake it off. Right there, just like that there. Ooh, now that's how I remember making hush puppies. Dip your spoon back in the water. And man, you just go to town. Just like that there. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Delicious little hush puppies. Man, it's about time to eat. Let's go ahead and plate this up, and let's get to eating. I'm going to put me a nice couple slices of catfish filet. Man, we cooked these up. Delicious. Get a nice hush puppy in there. How about two? How about three? Yeah, there we go. Get these little crumbs in there, too. I get some of my mama's coleslaw on the side there. Mmm. This is summer. This is southern. This is delicious. Put a nice piece of bread on the side there. Ooh. Man, oh man, what are you talking about? Throw your pole in the water and run home, because it's time to eat. Until next time on Cajun in the City, from the bayou to the Big Apple, keep cooking, America. Cajun in the City is sponsored by the Eileen S. Kaminsky Family Foundation, BillsVoices.com, Slap Your Mama Cajun Products, Qualified EB, and Pentloft Studios, LLC, with special thanks to the following.
From the bayou to the Big Apple. Keep cooking, America.